Hey guys, um, so I thought I'd do a little rundown of some of the gear that I bought for this two um, this two night wild camp. Um, so to start with, uh, this is my Tas uh, Tasmanian Tiger Raid Pack Three. Um, really, really good bag. Really well built. Um, it's about 48 liters uh, with two liters, an extra two liters on each side to make it about 52 liters all up. Um, it weighs about 2.9 kilos, so slightly on the heavier side, but the, the um, the strap system on the back is really, really good. Um, I've hiked for five days um, in the wilderness with this, about 15 kilos, um, about 15 kilos worth of gear inside, and I didn't have a problem at all. It was really, really good. Um, yeah, like I said, just really well built. Strap system is really strong. This waist belt can come off if you want it to. Um, it's got a really good, yes, it's got really good side pockets, so you can put your medical kit in one side and your water bottle in another side so that way you don't have to rummage through the bag which is good um, and it's got a, a good um, pocket on the top so very easy access to anything you want to, throughout the day um, and it's got a lot of molly webbing as well in the, the front and the sides so I've attached a little hatchet um, just using some double sided velcro I've just got some rope the carabiner and a sweat rag or bandana sorry um, yeah so like I said really good bag um, also, very handy thing to have, I find, when you're hiking, um, especially in sort of sandstone country, um, where it's very hilly and rocky, is a good um, walking stick. Uh, this is a flower spike from a xanthorea or a grass tree, um, and I've just uh, attached some paracord around, around the handle. Um, this is really, really handy, I find, just because um, when the ground's very uneven, it almost acts as your third leg. So if you need it to help you down and stuff, it's really good for that. Um, it's also really good to, if you're sort of walking through a bit snake, like snake territory, um, just to tap on the ground and make some noise just so the snakes are aware that you're coming through. Um, yeah, oh and also when you're pushing through dense scrub, I find to have this out and push the, the shrub, um, the dense scrub away from your face so you're not always smacking your face in with, um, with branches. Um, yeah, really handy thing to have, I think, walking stick. Um, anyway, let's um, open up the bag and we'll go through and see what we've got inside. It's also made of uh, 700 denier cordura, the fabric, so it's really, really strong and abrasion resistant, which was a big thing for me because of hiking through sandstone um, country, you're yeah, constantly rubbing up against rocks, so you need something that's going to last. So, yeah, really cool bag. Um, yeah, so first up, I've got my holder floors. Um, trekking hatchet. It's a really nice little little hatchet this one. Um, it's got a nice little leather leather guard. Pretty lightweight, um, pretty small and compact which is good. Uh, the only thing I have to say about um, hatchets or axes in Australia I find is a lot of our wood is hardwood. Um, so something like this just doesn't cut it for a lot of um, timber. I actually find a saw is much more useful than an axe um, or a hatchet. Maybe you had a much bigger axe, then yeah, that's fine. But the thing is, you don't want to be hiking with that. Um, maybe if you're car camping, then that's fine or something. But um, yeah, like I only use this sometimes, not all the time. Depends on what sort of task I want to do. Um, what kind of bush, if I want to make like a shelter or something, then I might bring this. But um, yeah, but it's still a nice little hatchet just to have. Um, and plus, a lot of the timber in Australia, um, the deadfall you'll find coming off trees, that's more than sufficient for using for uh, firewood. You don't always need to chop up wood. You pretty much just find it on the ground. So, but yeah, good, um, good old hatchet. Um, and then I've got some, yeah, just some rope and some paracord, and then a, a bandana, which I use as sort of a sweat rag just to keep the sweat off my forehead during summer, um, and also. The bushfires get pretty bad and they just bite your head, <laughs> so it's um, pretty good to keep them keep them away. Also, it can double as a sling if you end up hurting your arm um, and you need to sort of get it up. So that's pretty handy. Also, on the outside, just got a just a one liter sort of army canteen, um, just plastic. Pretty handy to have. Uh, in the pockets, just got a little, little head torch. Um, PLB, which I think is uh, really important to have if you're sort of spending a lot of time um, out bush, just because 
Um, yeah, you never know what's going to happen. You could get could get bitten by a snake, could be bitten by a spider, especially the snake if it's a, a brown snake or something. Um, you've only got about an hour before you get in real deep trouble. And if you're a good couple of hours hike away from um, your car or civilization or reception, which I often am, this could save your life. Um, also, if you injure yourself badly enough, um, you need to get sort of chop it out or um, or rescued, or if you lost, this um, this will be a lifesaver. So it's definitely worth um, investing in, I think. They're about 350 bucks, so they are pricey, um, especially because you hope you're never going to use it, but um, yeah, I think it's definitely worth for peace of mind. The girlfriend made me get that one. She said I couldn't keep going if I didn't have something like that. Uh, once again, just a first aid kit. Um, just, oh, I'm not going to go through everything in here, but you know, just all the normal stuff like bandanas. A um, couple of compression bandages just for snake bites. You always want to have two compression bandages so you can wrap up the limb um, should you get bitten. Um, yeah, some tea tree oil, which is good for um, yeah bites and stings and stuff like that. Just bits and pieces. Um, what else have I got in here? So I've got a little steel steel wool, um, which is pretty good to get off the. I find I don't know how. Um, so more the northern north northern hemisphere guys with the pine and stuff, but I find with Australian wood, when you put um your steel cup on the fire, you get a lot of sappy residue build up on the cup and it gets real sticky. So I need this to scrub it off. I don't know if that just happens with um sort of eucalypts and stuff, um, Australian gum trees, or if you guys get it with pine trees as well. But anyway, I find that handy. Just got a tea towel. Um, this is just a little. A little towel, not for washing up, but more for um, yeah, if I go for a swim or um, want to wipe some <laughs> sweat off the forehead again or something like that. Um, pretty handy to have. Wipe your hands. The other side, <laughs> that's just a um, plastic bottle with um, uh, some gin, some gin and tonic, which I love. On this side I've got my um, one litre Pathfinders stainless steel bottle, really good bottle. Um, oh, with its nesting cup. Um, so really like that, it's got a, a little lid as well. And, and I've got a little thing that um, hooks in and you can hang it up on a stick above the fire. That's really good. Um, and also this uh, little stand, so you can put it, put some um, twigs and stuff underneath there that on top so just get some flame underneath it which is pretty and it all it all um so yeah so it all compacts down to, to that which is good and then I've got my, my silky gomboy um, I only just got this so I only used it a couple of times I already really like it I used to have a, well I still do, have the Barco Laplander. Found it was just, the blade was just a little bit too short. Um, kept slipping out and stuff. So this is just that extra, a bit extra, um, so a bit more length in it. So hopefully it doesn't slip out as much. Seems like it's a really good saw. So can they get a bit more use out of it? Um, this is just a, a grill. I think, yeah, I think that's a brand, Expedition Research. Um, I think I got them off Amazon. Uh, which they shipped to Australia, which was good because <laughs> it's so hard to get things from overseas shipped to Australia. And there's not many places in Australia that sell this kind of stuff. So, but uh, just a little grill, which is good for cooking your steak and stuff on um, on the fire. Uh, yeah, so let's have a look inside. Oh, I should tell you. Um, and then this back pocket, really nice big open pocket. Um, just got a little tinder pouch. We've got some paper bark inside here. Um, yeah, swallow it. Um, little flask to, um, full of tawny or musket, uh, which a lot of people don't like, but I love. Um, yeah, just a book. Oh, this is a really handy thing to have. Wild Food Plants in Australia um, by Tim Lowe. Great book. If you're going to spend a lot of time in bush, um, I highly recommend getting this because it makes you look at the bush in a whole different way. Um, just realizing what, what you can eat and stuff. Um, yeah, really good book. Um, it's pretty much the Bible in Australia for edible plants. Um, it's got good description, whereabouts you'll find them, what time of year, 
um, how to identify the plant and whereabouts in Australia, like it shows on the map. Um, yeah, really good book. So I'm sure if you're into this kind of um, bushcraft stuff, you probably already know, know about it. But yeah, this is kind of what got me into it all. Um, oh yeah, also just got a topographical map of the area, just so I'm not going to get too lost. Have a look inside. Yeah, so inside. So I've got a, I've got a little bum bag, which um, yeah, I don't know. I kind of use it um as my little day pack. So when I've sort of set up camp and I want to go for a bit of a wander, I can manage to fit um my little army canteen. I can manage to fit this little canteen inside it. Um, as well as sometimes I put my little PLB in it just in case I get into trouble. Um, I always put some comp compression bandages just in case as well if I happen to get bitten by a snake while I'm out. Um, I've got them just in my little pack and maybe, in some, maybe some snacks or something. So I actually find it really handy. Um, it takes up a little bit of room but um, yeah, that way when you go wandering away from camp it's um, yeah, you've got something. Something to put some stuff in. Uh, this is a, well, I think it's Snow Peak uh, titanium um, plate. So yeah, this is really good because obviously use it as a plate, um, use it as a bowl as well. It's got some nice high sides um, and you can fry in it. So it's obviously, you can put it in the fire. So that's very handy, cook up some steak or whatever you got going. Um, just got, that's my food, just a, just a sack. Um, I've got a little speaker. I always take a speak with me. I don't know. I love music. I don't know if a lot of other people um, takes bothers taking music with them, but yeah, wouldn't go anywhere without um, my music. So it's always nice to sit back and by the fire and have some tawny or some gin and um, yeah, listen to some tunes. Um, just got some some beers. Um, so, just got an, um, a bushcraft knife, which I got custom made by um, a boy called Scotty Simmons. Um, he calls himself Gidgee. It's based up in uh, Queensland, I'm pretty sure. Um, beautiful, beautiful knife. Absolutely love this thing. Uh, it's got a Scandi grind. Um, I think the timber scale is a lancewood. Um, really, really nice knife. I'll try and do a closer, close up of it so you can see a bit better, but really nice knife. Um, he made the sheath as well, um, just with a little fire steel holder. The fire steel I made myself. I just got some, um, yeah, just bought the rod on a line and then just bought a bit of um, antler from the from the pet store. And just, um, yeah, just ground it down and drilled a hole in it. it fits perfectly, so nice little, um, nice little system there. Oh, what socks. Um, some thermal pants, thermal top, yeah, just undies and some clothes and stuff. Yeah, it goes. Uh, beanie, it's pretty cold this time of year. These are just the the, um, the zip off pants to my um, Fall Raven um, trousers. So, actually, oh yeah, one thing is that that, that was pretty important when um. I was sort of trying to figure out what pants to get because uh, I had some pretty other sort of just cheapo zip-off pants but they kind of got a bit worn down after a while um, and in Australia it's just always hot even in winter during the day it just gets hot and so you need something you can zip off um, so just bought some of these they're a little bit the materials it's good it seems like really good quality but it's a bit thick so I feel like in summer um, it might be a bit too heavy to wear um, I did notice when I did my five-day Butterwang trek, um, I was getting a little bit of a sort of a rash on the leg, so because um, I think building up a sweat, um, just rubbing against it, because it's a bit of a thicker material. I think obviously being a Swedish brand, they obviously um, yeah <laughs> build this stuff for cold weather, but still really good pants, um, good quality. Uh, actually, I'll just pull out. So yeah, it's more just another jumper. Um, and a flannel, always go with a flannel. 
Um, pull that in a sec. I've got a um, Cedar Summit, what is it, Eros um, pillow, a large one. Really good. Packs sound really small, uh, very comfortable. This is just a, a mosquito net inside of it. This little pouch that I found is tucked a mosquito net. Um, I think the brand was like 360 or something. You can buy them at Anaconda stores. Um, yeah, so just if you want to sleep on the ground, it's always good to have that um, draped over you just to keep all the insects away. Got, oh, oh. <laughs> um, got my Alton um, hammock. Uh, really cool brand. They're just like, I think they're just a small brand. Um, some youngish guys, but I think maybe based up in Queensland or something. Um, but yeah, it's a really good, really good hammock. I like it. Uh, it doesn't have like a mosquito net or anything built into it or a layer where you can put um, sort of a under quilt or anything. But for summer camping and stuff, it's really good. Um, yeah, I like it. I think it's a, a good brand. It's um, good quality. It's held up well, so. It's always nice to support the little guys as well. Obviously, you just got my DD hammock, um, three by three meter tarp. Uh, which is very important. This kind of um, wild camping, you always need something like this. Um, seems like a good size as well. You can get away with the to do a lot of variations in um, sort of shelter styles and stuff. So, uh, what else? Oh, yeah, I've got my um, what is it? Nemo Astro Air inflatable mat. Um, yeah, really cool. Don't usually bring this if I'm going to be hammock camping, but because it's a bit cold at the moment. Um, I might be using this instead, so, but yeah, folds down really small, which is really good. Um, and then I've got my, my new Mont Zodiac 500 um, sleeping bag. Uh, it's a down sleeping bag, so um, yeah, really warm. Used it a couple times now, really warm. Um, they're, a local, they're a local Aussie brand. Um, I think they use, I'm not sure if it's duck or goose. But they are pretty sure they're sustainable, um, yeah, ethically sourced uh, feathers. So that's one thing you've got to keep an eye on. Make sure you're getting your, your down from an ethical source. Um, yeah, folds down really, goes even smaller than that. It folds down so small. Uh, and then lastly, this is my VanQuest um, Husky pouch. This thing has everything in it. This is, um, yeah. I love this thing. I'm so glad I got it because it just keeps all my stuff organised. Um, yeah, I'll go. I'll go lay it down and do a bit of a run through and show you what I've got inside it. But yeah, really good. Definitely not worth having one of these. That way you're just not rum rummaging through your bag trying to find bits and pieces. It keeps it all together. So, but yeah, that's um, yeah, that's everything inside the bag. Um, so yeah, wasn't a super light trip this one, but. Um, yeah, got all my sort of essentials and stuff. Anyway, let's let's go through this um, let's go through this pouch. Yeah, so just got the Van Quest Husky. It's got pretty much everything in it that I need. Got a, it's got a Millbank bag, um, a soya a soya filter. There's there's a soya filter. There's a little um, water thing for it. Uh, just got a. The pot hanger, just to get the, the billy off the fire. Uh, this is really handy as well. Just something to get, yeah. Once again, get the billy off the fire or um, use for the, the titanium plate. So it's pretty handy to have. That's just a little bit of fat wood that I um, found when I was in America. <laughs> just so, I think it's almost dried out. Probably doesn't really work anymore. But um, just got that in there. A uh, little case pocket knife. Just a knife fork spoon, all kind of goes together. Nice and small, which is good. Uh, this is about a meter or so worth of paracord, maybe a meter and a half. Um, I keep this in here because I can use that um, with uh, with um, the spike of a xanthorea or something uh, to fire by friction method, it's like a, for like a bow drill. So just keep that in there in case I need it. I just got a pencil. Um, got my iPod, like I said, pretty important. Nothing like um, sitting back around the fire, listening to some Johnny Cash or something. Just a little, little torch. Um, 
the lighter, never use it. <laughs> Obviously, I like to try and do things the old school method, the fire steel or a um, fire by friction method, but it's always good just to have just in case. Little compass, um, just some double batteries for my head torch. Uh, these are my um, camera batteries, so they actually fit in perfectly there, which is good. Um, got my cables for my um, iPod and my, my phone. This little charger, which um, can put the batteries in here. They, um, I'll show you the. So that's the power bank, and then I can plug that into that and charge it up. Uh, this thing is awesome. Um, it's like weatherproof and shockproof, I'm pretty sure. Um, I think it's 10,000 milliamps, I think. Um, so you can get a fair few charges out of that. Really, really cool. And um, yeah, it fits in perfect there, which is really handy. Also just got a little um, all weather right in the rain notebook. Um, yeah, and just some other bits of paper. But yeah, that's um, that's what I've got in that. Kind of all the things that would um, come in really handy. And it's just good to have them all in one place rather than rattling around through the bag trying to find them. So, yeah. Yeah, so that's a little bit of an insight on what I bring in my walkabouts. Um, hope you guys enjoyed that, and I'll see you next time. Hooroo. <laughs>